Hello everyone and welcome to Israeli Frenemies, the show where the left and the right can sit and discuss the politics and events of the passing week. My name is Amnon Morag. Here with me is Davidi Hermlin. He is the president of the Center for Public Diplomacy in Israel and he is also running in the upcoming primaries for the Likud party to the Knesset. Thanks for being here. I think the historic visit of uh, President Debbie to Israel uh, marks a new era, uh, a new era for uh, security, for cooperation, and for peace. And I welcome you in this spirit to our home here in Jerusalem. Welcome, sir. Historic visit of the President of Chad in Israel. Amnon, what else? should be done to convince you and your leftist friends that Benjamin Netanyahu is the biggest and the most glorified statement that Israel had since ever? Well, I think I don't really uh, need to be convinced that Netanyahu is a very talented statesman. Uh, and I do give him credit for quite a few things that he's done in the international arena. Uh, and I do have a lot of crit criticism for some other things. I think. If we take this instance, for example, I think that in this case, as well as another example of uh, Netanyahu letting politics get in the way of his uh, statesmanship, because I, I, I'm sure that you know that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they were against inviting uh, the president of Chad before he would agree to resume ties. And I have a feeling that the decision to bring him here before he gives us this uh, recognition and, and uh, formal relations was somehow connected to Netanyahu's current political situation and his image. Let's say that uh, we can be very happy that David Ben-Gurion didn't uh, listen to those who told him not to declare the independence of Israel. And uh, you know what, I have uh, a lot of respect uh, uh, to the officials in the, and the professionals in the Foreign Affairs Ministry, but uh, as my father always say, Bottom lines. In the bottom line, our situation now under the leadership of Netanyahu is the best we had since the, uh, the declaration of independence 70 years ago. And maybe it's about time to say that even if you disagree with uh, this prime minister, still at least at uh, this uh, field of uh, foreign affairs and international relations, maybe he is the best. Like I said, he is very good. Um, uh, can't you say because, the no, best? No, no, he's very, uh, I don't know if he's the best, I can't really compare him uh, to Ben Gurion or to other prime ministers. Not that to Ben Gurion. He's best very good and I agree that unfortunately, 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 we don't have on the left and uh, the center left today someone who can, uh, who can take him up oh, on this issue or on, on, on some others. And it's very unfortunate because I think that while there are some things that are positive, uh, we, we are suffering a lot of damage. Some of it not in the short term, some of it is in the long term in how we're aligning ourselves with the anti-democratic, anti-liberal forces in the world today. Maybe that's good policy for this decade, maybe, maybe even the next decade, uh, but in a few decades that, that may be a problem. I have to say that it, uh, it doesn't disturb you in the, in the left wing of Israel uh, when you would like uh, to cooperate more with uh, Mahmoud Abbas and uh, when you did all those agreements with uh, Fatah and PLO and uh, Arafat. So uh, these guys, they are not uh, so democratic, I would say. But when Netanyahu brings us not fake peace, but real relations, this is not okay to cooperate with no, President, I'm not, I'm not maybe we that maybe we wouldn't vote for him in Israel. Listen, I... But what about the interest of Israel? Are you citizens of the world, or first of all, foremost, are you citizens of Israel? My position is absolutely based on what I think is the Israeli interest, uh, and also about international. I'm not naive about international relations. It's clear to me that it's based mainly on interests and power, and we need to be led by real political considerations when we conduct ourselves in the international arena. Uh, that's, that is clear, but still we need to analyze in every, every single case, case-by-case case basis, uh, we need to see what are the means and what are the ends, and what, are, what is the value and the virtue of the means and the end. So, for example, if we are warming up to a dictator in order to serve our vital national security interest vis-a-vis -vis Iran, that's justifiable, even though it's a dictator, uh, even if uh, we, we are selling him uh, weapons, for example, because our national security is the, it's, it's the first obligation that we have to our citizens. But if we're warming up to dictators in order to bypass the Palestinians, for example, or in order to secure votes 
uh, in the UN that would safeguard our uh, uh, interests with settlements. This is not okay, for example. I didn't okay, see so all we, we need to look in, a, in every single case if the means justify the end and if we have a proper end. I didn't see all this special against uh, dictatorships when uh, President uh, Obama uh, signed this awful, awful, terrible agreement with uh, Iran, the Iran deal with uh, maybe the worst dictatorship on earth. Uh, then everything was okay. Well, it was, it is still clear and it was clear to, I think, anyone uh, that can see the reality that uh, this uh, deal is, uh, as President Trump said, it's a bad deal. And uh, I, I just always I, th I have the feeling that uh, all the, those uh, standards are, uh, are becoming double standards. Sudden, if something is good for Israel, suddenly we should consider dictatorship, not dictatorship. Yeah, but so all those the... leftist corporations with the worst enemies we can, uh, we can imagine, this is so okay to I, make I hope you're peace not, with you're enemies. I hope you're not trying to blame me. Of I don't not, blame not you, I just challenge the you. Israeli. Okay, so let, let's make it clear. I care about the Israeli interest, and when I say that this is something is wrong, I think it's wrong for Israel. And in many cases, it is wrong for Israel to align ourselves with the anti-democratic, anti-liberal regimes, especially when we're not getting out of it something that is very important to our national security, and it's more important to our pol policy in the settlements, which I also object to. It's not a matter of whether or not it's good for Israel or bad for Israel. I, uh, the calculation is whether or not this is good for Israel. And I think that some of the things, for example, Netanyahu opening up to the Arab states, that's a good thing. But there are that's also even, That's also a good thing, even if uh, the, the aim here is to pressure the Palestinians to come to the negotiation table. This is also justifiable. If it's to bypass the Palestinians and keep building settlements, it's not justifiable. I Pretty think that all this pressure to negotiate, to negotiate about what? I think that now we should wait to see what will be uh, the deal by President Trump, so-called the deal. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? What will be this deal? Well, I think it does have a strong regional element. I hope that uh, we will try and use these new ties with the Arab world again to pressure the Palestinians to come to the table and to reach an agreement that uh, with strategic benefits for Israel and for the Palestinians that could take the parties closer and achieve a deal that was impossible before. My, uh, my bets are not on it, right? Because I think that uh, the Trump administration so far, it had the great opportunity to have leverage on both sides. And, and instead, what it chose to do and what Netanyahu chose to do with this sympathetic US administration is to make sure that we're not going to reach negotiations because we're trying to bypass the Palestinians unilaterally decide facts on the ground. Two weeks after the coalition was downsized to a slim majority of 61 to 59, the Knesset was in session this week, and we had an opportunity to see uh, how hard it's going to be for the coalition to function in these circumstances, especially now that we have uh, uh, looming elections and looming primary elections for many of the Knesset uh, members. And it seems like this government can't really function and everyone is waiting to see when Netanyahu will find that it's the right timing that serves his interest to go to elections. And my question to you is, don't we deserve a government that can function and work to, to uh, put it, its agenda forward? I will divide my answer to two. First of all, this government is functioning. Even, hypothetically, this coalition will lose all the votes for all the law proposals uh, in the next uh, upcoming weeks or even months, it doesn't matter because, as you know, the parliamentary system of Israel, uh, it will take months until each uh, law proposal will become uh, a real law. So uh, during this term of uh, Knesset, nothing will be changed. It's only about ego and the, uh, you know, uh, uh, reputation of the opposition versus the coalition. So it's not really important. As long as the government is, uh, is ruling and they express its uh, uh, policy 
uh, toward uh, uh, several issues. This is one thing. Secondly, we do deserve more stable coalition for the, uh, for the future later. This is why I really hope that after the voters of the majority in Israel, the voters of, from the center to the right, after they saw how it is, uh, how a coalition of the right wing can be uh, uh, challenged by little uh, fraction, fractions in Knesset, I really hope that uh, we will make a proactive role to uh, support Likud in high numbers because only big Likud of 40 or 45 seats in next Knesset will guarantee that the central right government will uh, be able uh, to stay uh, stable and uh, to rule. I see. And what is your take on why do you think there aren't elections now? Because do you buy this uh, notion that we have uh, uh, unprecedented security situation that does not allow going to elections, even though this prime minister wanted to go to elections when it served him in circumstances that were no less dangerous and uh, volatile? I think, first of all, that the interest of the prime minister is to go to elections as soon as possible because uh, it's very popular right now and you, cannot, uh, you, can't, uh, you don't know what will, uh, what will happen in the upcoming... Uh, so why week. is he saying that there's but a security situation and Bennett says there is no very uh, special and particular security situation? I think situation. that all, all the not uh, uh, biggest fans of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu from the press will tell you that right now in the north we have a very sensitive we face very sensitive situation with Hezbollah. Please remember all the sensitivity with the Russians and all the uh, worries that uh, strategic weapons will uh, make uh, their way from Tehran uh, uh, to Beirut. So I, I think that uh, as uh, we know in uh, uh, defense uh, methods, it's better to focus on one front and not uh, on two. So I think that uh, the patience of Prime Minister Netanyahu toward Hamas is because he would like to focus on the north. This is one thing. Secondly, I think that uh, we are all waiting, as uh, we said before, to the political uh, 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 proposal or to the deal of, by President Trump uh, regarding the Palestinian issues and the so-called Palestinians. And uh, I think that it's a, a, this is why Prime Minister Netanyahu would like uh, to wait and see uh, uh, what the next elections are really about. Because okay. the, next, the, the, the most important vote will be if the Israeli public trusts Netanyahu or someone else to deal with Trump's deal. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll give you my take. And I'm going to be much more cynical because I believe our politicians are much more cynical. And uh, I think that Netanyahu needs to win the next election by a very large margin, that the margin of his victory, uh, I think he believes, will also decide his fate legally. He's under, a, he'll probably be indicted in the coming few uh, uh, months. And for that reason, he wants to have the elections in the particular timing that would be best for him. That's as far away from the allegations as, and as close as possible to uh, the Independence and Memorial Day events in May. Um, and, and this is what he's trying to do. And, and this is, I mean, really, if we, you look at it, it's a circus. We, we have a, a Knesset and a government that can't really function. It's not just the parliament. Also, the government can't really uh, carry out its policy and has to serve all kinds of various interest groups because we are going to have uh, primary elections soon. And, and we, are, we are stalling, Sorry particularly because the you. prime minister needs his timing for election. Sorry for disturbing you, but... Why do you say not functioning? Because the government is functioning. Netanyahu is Minister of Defense. You just saw the, uh, the visit of the I'm president. I'm talking, for from, example, about the China. budget that is being... Uh, uh, the budget is uh, until the end of 2019. We are, trying to, we are now trying to... Uh, the, uh, the opposition brought the, those populist offers to open the budget with all...
Again, riots in Gaza, uh, should I say, as usual. Amnon, uh, we've tried uh, the Oslo Accords to go step by step. It didn't work. Then we got huge wave of terror between each step. I call it peace for peace. Peace, for, peace of mind, if we give peace of land, it didn't work. Even Dr. Yossi Bellin said it was a failure. Then we've tried to go to the uh, final agreement uh, in Camp David 2000, Barak and Arafat, and then we saw that the agenda of the PLO, as usual, is not final agreement for, uh, with us, but final solution for us. And you know what I mean. They just don't want here any kind of Jewish state in any uh, borders. And then we have tried the disengagement, first from Lebanon, who got inside the vacuum, Hezbollah, de facto, Iranian division. And then we have tried the same in Gaza, who got inside the vacuum, again, Hamas, Iranian division. So I would like to ask you, what do you think should be done with Gaza? Later I will give you my perspective. Okay, so first of all, I think that your perspective is very important because you're running uh, for election in the Likud party. The Likud party has been in control for the past decade. And the question is, why is this the situation that we have in the southern border? I mean, Hamas, of course, is an enemy, a terrible enemy. It's the reason why I go to the army and I will go to, to reserve duty if I need to go. But I am a citizen of Israel and I vote for the Israeli government. And I expect my government to be accountable for what is going on. And the Likud party should be accountable for what is happening in Gaza in the past few years uh, because we don't have security and quiet for the people of southern Israel. We're constantly on the verge of war. So what is your alternative? For God, no, I'm, God I'm, forbid I'm if, I hear, uh, if I, Lapid I'm or Gabay will be, or Livni will become prime minister. I'm insisting. I want to understand why, what do you think I, I Netanyahu is you. trying to do and why do you think he's failing? I don't think he's failing. I'll this I, is not I, a I'll tell you exactly. No, I'll tell you exactly what I think. Okay. I think that the cause of all the failures during the last 25 years, since the time of Rabin until now, okay, although the security now of Israelis is much better than the times of the left, but let's put this politics in the side now, at the side. Uh, so the you thing think Netanyahu is, that Netanyahu is, is such a great I, statesman, I, like you said I, earlier, I, and he cannot reverse what the left uh, did allegedly First of all, uh, yes. in 10 years, it yes. cannot do the, it, the, the, cannot the, solve the situation. We still pay and we will uh, continue to pay, I think for many decades, for the mistakes of uh, Robin and Perez in the 90s. But I don't want to open this uh, uh, debate now. This is my point of view, I know your point of view. Let's talk about the future or the present. I'd be glad I, to, I want I to know what Netanyahu's strategy I'm is. I'm trying to, uh, to, to answer it. Please. As long as the Iranian regime is uh, strong in the background, especially as long as this regime has insurance policy, and the insurance policy is the option to develop a nuclear milita uh, a military nuclear ability, it will be very difficult to, uh, to achieve uh, any agreement with the Palestinians. The so-called moderate Palestinians, let's assume that there are some like that, they will not compromise with you because they know that Iran will give order to Hamas to make revolution. And for a revolution, you don't uh, need a majority. It's enough to be violent enough. And of course, Hamas in Gaza, as long as Hamas has this support by Iran, the ideology, the money, the weapons. So there's the, no solution? I think that the message uh, of Israel, of all the Zionist parties to the world, is stop wasting our time by to while talking about Palestinian state, instead to talk how uh, uh, will you stop the Iranian nuclear program, because it's waste of time, waste of tears, waste of blood. Okay, uh, we agree I don't about think the Palestinian Iran nuclear pro state should be at all, but right we now it's waste of time to talk about it because the Iranians okay, so I will think, not let it So let me be. tell you what I think, and about the broader Palestinian issue, yeah. because we're not talking just about Gaza. I think Gaza, uh, just to settle this point, this is a particular instance where we've seen this government fail. It's in power for 10 years. You can't blame what happened with the left 14 years ago. This was also the Likud party, by the way, disengaged. Of course, we blame for everything. And you should take responsibility uh, no, to admit you, if that you the policy are, if of you Prime are in Minister Rabin was 10 wrong. Years and you have the so many greatest, people died and you don't take responsibility said, for that. The greatest statesman that would, we have ever had. And he can't deal Imagine with Imagine yourself Gaza that this great problem. statement cannot solve all the mistakes of the Rabin okay. and parents. So did. I think this is a failure of the Likud party and of Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And if we talk about the broader Palestinian issue, mm -hmm. there, are, there is a connection also to Iran. We completely agree about Iran, about the nuclear deal. 
but when we talk about the Palestinians, what we should talk about, and not, no, it's not everyone wasting our time in the international community. I don't really care about the international the community. The international community I don't care, really care about Palestinian I care, statehood. I care Europeans, about our all. interests. And I, 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 I agree that we, we don't have very good partners on the Palestinian side, and I don't know if we can reach an agreement in the next uh, two, five, or ten years. What I do know is that right now what we're doing is making sure that it will be impossible in the future, even if, if we do have a partner, to politically separate from the Palestinians. We are building settlements where we shouldn't be building them. We are investing our security uh, funding and our uh, security forces in the West Bank instead of uh, getting ready to, to fight also in the northern border. So you believe that the policy I of this government will guarantee that there will be no Palestinian state? I think so, and by the way... So I'm I happy because I vote for Likud because okay. I would like to guarantee and this that is there will not be a Palestinian And this is where state. we disagree because I yeah. believe, uh, and I'd like to know what your solution is if there's no... <laughs> okay, it's time for the good word of the week. My good word is reminding us that today is the 29th of November. It's an historic uh, date. It's when the UN resolution uh, decided uh, and gave legitimacy for a Jewish state uh, in the land of Israel. And we can also be reminded that it talked about a two-state reality here as the solution to the situation. And I hope that this resolution uh, one day will be met. I'm just, I'm just happy to uh, mention the November 29th uh, to remind us that it was not solution to divide the country, but only a suggestion. And since uh, this uh, offer was denied by the, and rejected, actually by the Arab leadership. So we are going back to the fundamental international law, which is the San Remo uh, uh, summit decisions adopted by the League of Nations. And that means that the Jewish collective has exclusive uh, so, uh, rights uh, to express sovereignty in the entire side <laughs> uh, uh, western side of the Jordan, and uh, we don't need actually this legitimacy from the UN or from the League of Nations because we have this legitimacy from the nature and the history of our people, as okay. was declared by David Ben Gurion in the in the Declaration of Independence. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll debate this some other time. Thank you very much for being with us today. See you next time. <laughs>